Hi, I'm Mark Barsamian. In this video, I'll be discussing building and simplifying expressions. So this material, building and simplifying expressions, it's actually prerequisite skills. We're in the middle of chapter two now. We're going to be discussing section 2.4, rates of change. Um, but th this prerequisite skill of building and simplifying expressions is very important. So in the book, this is in section 1.1, page 10, example 6, and you have a homework, homework 24, which is these four problems from chapter 1. So we're just going to do one example. This one example deals with the function f of x, that's this quadratic polynomial, and we're supposed to find these six quantities. And in the last question, f, we're supposed to assume that the letter H is not zero. Solution to A. So our function is this polynomial. Now our job is to find F parentheses for X. The first thing I'm going to do is to build what I call the empty version of F. So in the empty version, I just replace all of the x's with empty parentheses. Now I can just substitute in 4x into each of those parentheses. So when we substitute in 4x into each of those parentheses and simplify, we just end up with this result that f of x equals this stuff. So to be clear, I can do something like this. This is like a great big accordion equation. f of x equals this, which equals this, which equals this. So that's thinking of it as an accordion where you have the accordion all spread out. And what that ends up telling you is that the thing that you started with, this f of 4x, is equal to the thing that you ended with. Now notice the layout here. The left side didn't change. I just worked down the right side on each row, starting a new expression that was equal to the one on the row above it. And each, each row has an equal sign at the beginning, and I don't have to keep writing the left side over and over again, because this is just one great big sentence. f of 4x equals this stuff, which equals this stuff, which equals this stuff, period. On to question B. So in B, we are supposed to find f parentheses negative 4. So let's start with the empty version. So there's the empty version. Now we just substitute the number negative 4 into each of those parentheses. We uh, simplify. And we end up with the, the number negative 115. So in this part, we need f of 4. And we're going to again return to the empty version. Start there. So we end up with f of 4 equals the number 5. So in question D, we need this strange expression. Well, we'll do what we did in the previous um, three parts. We'll start with the empty version. And then we substitute in 4 plus h into each of those parentheses. So our final result is this big mess of an expression. Now a couple of things to note. First thing is that when you square 
4 plus h. You don't just get 4 squared plus h squared. You get this expression with a cross term. Because remember that 4 plus h quantity squared means that you have to do this. So all of that work went into that expression. And then once we got to this step here, we had to distribute the minus 3 to all three of those terms. So in question E, we need to build this big expression. We'll realize that that big expression is made up of parts that we've already computed. So let's just use those earlier results. I'm going to use the results from parts um, C and D. So from D, we know that f of 4 plus h is this quantity. And from part C, we know that f of 4 is this quantity. So that's using our previous results. Now we can simplify this. That 5 cancels that 5. And that's our result. And now in part f, we need to build this strange ratio. Now we're supposed to build that ratio, and we're, we're supposed to assume that h is not 0. Good thing, because that ratio would not even be defined if h were 0, because you can't divide by 0. Um, well, so we're going to do this, but first let's make a note that this is a difference quotient. That is, it's of the form delta y over delta x. Now, uh, let's compute this. Notice that the numerator is what we found in part e. So let's just build this expression and use the result from part e. So there's the computation. In the first step, we use the result from step E. And then in, in the second step, we factored H out in the numerator, which was just to prepare us for this last step where we wanted to cancel. We wanted the cancellation to be as simple as possible and to resemble the kinds of cancellations we've had before. So there's our result. And that's the end of the video. Thank you.